All right, uh, Psalm 42, which we stopped streaming the uh, afternoon class. So those that are watching streaming, we've done quite a jump since the last time you uh, uh, visited in with us. But we're still in Psalms. We're still making our way through here. And I did not see any reason, since this is what I was already working on, to uh, change it up here. Um, Psalm 42 is, um, by all accounts, a, a song about actual spiritual depression. The first verse of this psalm is quite famous for one reason, and that's because it is the opening line of a, or a somewhat opening line of a, a relatively famous uh, worship song. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual psalm does... Uh, does not hold with that song's uh, message necessarily. It, this is really about the ups and downs of being a Christian. And from what right. we can tell um, about this, this was written about during when Absalom was reigning. Now it says to the chief magician uh, Mashtil for the sons of Korah. Uh, now, these are not those sons of Korah, um, uh, but these are, uh, uh, or, or that Korah necessarily from uh, Moses' time, but it is, it, it is indicated that these may have been priests and stuff around the same time mm -hmm. as David was alive. Uh, and that does play into a couple of verses in here, so it's important to know it, it, with anything, um, I think, uh, especially when you're studying the Word of God, it's important to know who your author is and who the message is being delivered to because it changes the framework for what, what right. you're trying to, to examine. Um, the first verse of Psalm 42, as we get into it here, says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so, my soul pant, uh, pant, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Amen. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When, sh when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I, pour, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I, for I ha had gone... With the multitude, I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude, with a multitude that kept holy day. Amen. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall praise him for the help of his countenance. Now, verse 5 takes us to, and if you've read ahead, you'll know that verse 11 of the same chapter reiterates the same, the basically word for word, except for, I think, uh, uh, one, one, word, one word there. Uh, uh, what is in verse 5? It's, it's a refrain. This is, this, is, this is the chorus of the song, uh, if you will. Um, but what is he talking about? He, talk, he starts in, in, in the first verse at, uh, about talking about a, a heart or a deer panting after water and, and the soul of, and it says for the sons of Korah, so the souls of the sons of Korah to revisit with God. Now, if you're a priest in the time of the, when the Bible was recorded, if you're, if you're an Israelite priest, uh, you worship in the tabernacle. We know that the temple in line with this time period has not been constructed yet. It has been your job and your family's job for generations and generations upon generations since the back to, to Exodus and since the appointing of the Levitical line to do what to 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 serve and worship God. How do you make how do you make your living by serving and worshiping God? Right. How do you how, when, when you wake up in the morning? What what is what is the one goal and task for the man for that day? To serve and to worship God. Amen. And Absalom takes over Jerusalem and forces a lot of these people out. Mm -hmm. Anybody loyal to, I mean, and David did, if you read about 
when Absalom tried to, act, to, 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 to take the, the throne from David, David did have some little followers among some of those people that he'd been traveling with for right. a long time. Um, and so anybody loyal to David was pushed out, was, was, was taken out, was jailed, or whatever, whatever, whatever you have, whatever you, uh, whatever you can say there. And so these people were being pushed away from their God-given duty. Mm -hmm. So as we look at this verse, what what is driving this deep seated aid is that it reiterates the thirst in verse in verse two. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Mm -hmm. These men want to go back to the house of God. Amen. They want to be back among Him because. You, you could you could take this you could take verse two and say well a coming up here before God well they must be talking about death they must be talking about uh, the afterlife if you will uh, the uh, uh, when we go and we and we greet him on on, on the on the uh, shoals of glory um, but in context it de it definitely seems because we know for certain that at times. God appeared directly in the tabernacle. Right. Uh, he he sat above the mercy seat, and 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 uh, 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 it is referenced as Shekinah glory. He, he, he uh, a, a, a glowing light, uh, sometimes appearing as a smoke or, or, or a, a, a pillar of cloud, or as, as as a pillar of fire. You know, God God actually came down, and in some small way, and through some type of manifestation, was with his people. The sons of Korah were, pre were priests. They had probably experienced this. Mm -hmm. And what their ultimate desire was, was and, and, and the root cause, and you can get to, you get to verse 3, you can see, my tears have been my meat day and night. Mm -hmm. well, the root cause of this depression is not fulfilling their role. Right. Not being where they need to be. Not, and and, and it's, it's more than, well, I'm just not going to be there. Physically being unable right. to be where they're supposed to be. Uh, not, not, not having access to it. We're very, very fortunate in the United States to have the ability to go to church whenever we desire. I'm over here almost every day. No, not actually worshiping or anything necessarily every time, but uh, but I, I'm here almost every day. I, I can I can freely walk into a church without without uh, without any uh, 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 fear for my life, right. fear for uh, for for uh, uh, necessarily direct ridicule, maybe some actual ridicule, but but not not being not being uh, not being derided necessarily. Uh, right. it, it, it's especially here in the Bible Belt. It's 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 nothing. It's it, it and and. We take we take for granted the ability to just I'm going to church now. I, I I am I am I am going to do the job that God has called me to do. I'm going to go worship. We take for granted all these things. There are right. many places around the world that would align with these thoughts. Now we have to get to we and we started the top of the hour talking about it. And we have to get to the idea: Is spiritual depression a thing? Yes. Can Christians be depressed, mm -hmm. and I think without much uh, question in my mind, yes is the answer to that question. Amen. David experienced a lot of it. You don't have to read through many <coughs> psalms to see that he was constantly bombarded um, right. with 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 doubt, uh, with self loathing, um, and and. With this particular song, this this actually kind of differs from David because a lot of David's uh, personal depression revolved around him being worried that his sin had separated him from God. Right. That's what eighty percent of it feels like. Of, of, of everything that I've read in the Psalms feels like David just being like, "I've sinned, I've messed up. Please don't do anything awful to me. I want to come back." Mm -hmm. That, 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 that right. seems like to be the gist of it. But in this song, it's different. This is spiritual depression on a level that I'm not able to do these things. I'm not, and think about all the number of physical ailments, you know, right now, of course, my mind is immediately uh, uh, drawn to Brother Junior and Sister Diane who are physically unable to visit the house of God. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Brother Eric, who is physically unable to visit the house of God. We go even further. Sister John Lane, who is physically incapable of visiting the house of God. Now, what kind of depression does that lead to? If you do not spend time with God, and which is good, you can spend, but also corporately worshiping and meeting right. with God and with His people, it leads to a spiritual wasting away. Mm -hmm. People that get clinically depressed, as in their 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 mind, you know, through chemical imbalance or whatever, oftentimes shut themselves off from other people, yep. which leads to further depression. Mm -hmm. And I think we we are created social creatures. What was the first thing that, that God had Adam do in the garden? First of all, he 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 trotted his menagerie of wonderful creatures by him and said, okay, Adam, we got to name all these things. Mm -hmm. And Adam got to spend a lot of time. He pro probably met the first dog and it became the very first man's best friend. Right. And, 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 and got to run his fingers through a lion's mane. Probably had a lot of great interactions. But what was the one thing that made Adam sad? He says, he, God looked down and said, we... we it was part of our plan, but this is not the way that Adam is made. Right. He needs some of his own kind. Mm -hmm. And so he, he literally put Adam to sleep, performed the first cloning, and, and made woman. Because what? Because Adam was a social creature. Amen. And we're social creatures. And going to God's house and being with God's people and communicating directly with God as a unit Amen. is important. And the sons of Korah were cut off from that, and it led to depression. It led to sadness. It led to it led to tears have been my meat right. day and night. And verse four, it goes on, and says, "When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went to uh, I I went with them to the, the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day." Now, this is where we get to the root cause of a lot of this depression here in verse 4, and I've already sort of pre-elaborated on it. This is when I remember these things, when I remember why I'm thirsting after God, why I am sad, why I'm depressed, I pour out my soul in me. Why? Because at the end of that, you have a colon. Now, semicolons separate two independent clauses, but colons... Elab say that everything after this elaborates on all the things that we talked about in the earlier part of the sentence. Right. And he says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me when I'm sad, when I'm like opening myself to God saying, I'm, I'm, I'm upset. Mm -hmm. What is the root cause? Well, after the colon is the going with the multitude, going, going to the house of God, meeting with God's people, joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. These men were upset because they couldn't get to the house of God. Amen. These men were upset, and, and let's, let's take this a step further. These men were upset because they could not perform the service that they were designed to, that Amen. they had been called to. Every Levite made his living and wage and, and livelihood through the house of God. Amen. That's what the flesh hooks and all that stuff is for. You throw them up on the altar, you, you, you shove your hook in there, you pull back meat, and whatever comes off with that hook, that's your portion. Enjoy. Good. Verse 5, though, the refrain is an important part of this chapter because it says, uh, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For yet I shall praise him for the help of his countenance. It says, it is a moment of self-examination. Now, we do get involved in spiritual depression. Every Christian will experience it from time to time. It's part of life. Mm -hmm. it, it is part of spiritual life. But verse 5 offers a ending or at least a, um, a solution to this problem. It says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Self-examination is important. Amen. Being able to hold up a mirror to yourself and say, I am the problem, mm. or I can, with this mirror, identify the problem is important. Why? 
The question, the, 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 in, in the first part of verse 5, you have two questions, and they both begin with why. It is searching for an answer. Mm -hmm. Now, as we can see from the early part of the chapter, the sons of Korah already knew, it, knew the answer. They, they already knew the problem. Now, our spiritual depression can come from us. I don't think that's what the case is here, and I'm not implicating that into these in, into the Scripture here, but as we said before, a lot of David's spiritual depression came from that very thing. So, asking these questions, identifying the problem is an important part to getting better. Amen. <laughs> uh, to, to, you know, it's just like with, with, with clinical depression. Well, why are you depressed? Is it chemical imbalance? We, we can fix that problem. Is it, is it, is it some type of, of, of social problem? Is it anxiety? Identify the problem. You, you, in, 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 in regular medicine, you're never going to cure people without knowing what the issue is first. Amen. So why should this be any different? And the sons, of course, said, why? Why am I hurting in my soul right now? The answer is left undone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because in the previous verses, we have an answer. We know why. It is, it, is, it, it is like a sentence with an understood you as the subject. If I, if I look at Dad and I say, go get me a glass of water, there's an understood you as the subject of the sentence. I'm telling you to go get... If you remember all those brackets, you break your sentence down and whatnot. Those those are annoying. Um, but uh, uh, but there, you remember you could put you could put a special thing on your bracket for understood use, and there's an understood causation for their depression. It is it is it is clearly outlined in the early part of the chapter. So now we move on to solution. Hope in thou in God. Amen. Have faith. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think necessarily always in Scripture are hope and faith the exact same thing. But I, I, think, I think here he's saying put your trust, your, your hope, your faith in God. And then we see another colon. Let's elaborate on this hope in God. For I, sh for, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. The sons of Korah understood that you could have faith that God was going to take care Amen. of your situation. Why? He said, he says, well, we're going to praise him for the help of his countenance. If they could still feel the presence of God where they were at. Amen. That for this specific situation where they are, they are literally physically separated from being able to do the work that they're supposed to do and, and the type of worship that they want to do. He, the solution here is... Yes, it is important to go to the house of God. I think in these verses we can see a, a, almost a better example than forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. And a completely taken out of context verse. This is a better, better. A, a better proof for, for that if you're going to look for something. But um, he says, where you are now, I know that you're separated, but you're not by yourself. Amen. The help of his countenance. That means he was looking on the sons of Korah. He, his, 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 his countenance, his face was toward them. He says, For because, because you are looking at me, I can have hope. Amen. That tomorrow will be a better day. And this is to alleviate the depression. Let's move on. Verse 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down with me. Therefore I remember thee from the land of Jordan and, uh, and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth out, calleth unto deep. At the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God my rock, Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As a sword with uh, as with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For, yet, for I shall yet praise <clears throat> him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. 
Verse six, we seem like okay. Well, we've got, we've got, we've got solution. We've got faith. We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got causality, and we've got a solution to our problem. And then verse six, he says, "Oh God, my soul is cast down within me." We're right back into the depression. Right. Therefore, I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites and Hillmizar. Now they were in the Jordan area. You know anything? I, I drew, drew enough very crude maps on the whiteboard downstairs for y'all to know Jordan is not necessarily close to Jerusalem. Right. Where the tabernacle is at, it's, it's not in the same place. So he was saying, I'm looking from this from this hill, this hill of Mizar, over toward Jerusalem, and I'm remembering you from there. But my soul Man. is cast down. Spiritual depression may not be something that you can get over in a day. That's it. Amen. It's not something that's going to... And, and self-encouragement is good, but it's it, it sometimes it's not always going to carry you. We go further and it says, Deep call unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy ways and billows are gone over me. It's like drowning. Mm-hmm. Peter, and I don't believe that this was necessarily his salvation experience, but whenever he was walking on the water mm-hmm. to the Lord, he had his eye on the prize, he had a goal in mind, he had he, 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 he was the only person <coughs> of, 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 of the entire boat who had, who had, the, uh, who had the wherewithal to, uh, to step out upon the water and go, right. to, and go to the Lord. But when he saw the waves boisterous, he began to sink. Verse 5, I think, is like Peter after they realized Jesus was coming on the water. Remember, that, remember that they were on a boat, and they had been fighting the storm for a while. And then they see Jesus walking on the water. And they say, it's a spirit. And they freak out about that. And then when they realize it's not a spirit, and the Lord says, don't, don't worry, it's just me. I'm heading over to Galilee. Uh, my plan was to sort of shoot on by you guys, but uh, uh, here we are. Um and uh, and Peter and, and that moment when they realize the Lord is there in the midst of the storm, I think is verse five for this chapter. Right. We have a storm. We have a problem. We know what the we know what the problem is, and the solution is right there. His countenance is toward us. Amen. And you feel like you can go on. And Peter did too. He's like, oh, Lord, if if it's you, bid me to come out on the water. Jesus said, All right, come on. I mean, it's not going to be a hard thing for me. <laughs> for me. <laughs> and Peter steps out on the water. Clear goal in mind. But then we get to kind of Peter's verse 6 of this chapter, and he looks around. The storm didn't disappear. For the sons of Korah, Absalom's occupation of Jerusalem didn't go away. Just because they had faith in God, just because they had hope that there would be a brighter tomorrow, just because they were singing praises because they could still feel the presence of God with them, did not Make the storm go away. Did they, at the end of verse 5, and you read verse 6, and it says, that, you know, is, is there a 5.5 wedged in there somewhere where it says, and then they got to go back to Jerusalem and everything was fine? Hmm. No, nope, not in there. Right. <laughs> the storm still yet exists. And so when Peter looks around, and when the sons of Korah look around, the storm's still there, they sink. Mm-hmm. And end of verse 7, the billows are gone over my head. It, the, 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 does it make their faith in verse 5 any less valid? Does it make, I, it took incredible faith, I'm sure, for Peter to step out of a boat and to try to walk on water. Right. I wouldn't even know how to begin to step on water. You're, I mean, it, 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 it boggles the imagination. Right. You see the sons of Korah <coughs> experience these same things, and does it make it any less them any less faithful? No. Verse 8 says, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in, in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and the prayer and my prayer unto the God of my life. Verse 8, I think, is where you see Peter in that very same, in that very same uh, narrative in the New Testament where he says, The Lord save me. Mm-hmm. If the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and the night, his song shall be with me. 
you know what the, the one there, there are two unchanging factors in the story where Peter gets out of the boat. The fact that the storm still existed, still going, but Jesus was still there. Amen. Two unchanging and, 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 and honestly, odds are Jesus was the generator of that storm. But these two unchanging points, you know, the, the things may be getting bad around us. And I think verse 8, you can see that that that, that the sons, of course, saying, yes, we're, we're still in a bad situation, but we're going to keep appealing to God. Spiritual depression is not something you're going to cure in a day. Spiritual depression is not something you're going to cure uh, it, it maybe in a week. You have to keep making those appeals. I will say unto you, God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why, why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Mm -hmm. Now, this is not recorded in Scripture, but when Peter was thinking and said, Lord, save me, mm -hmm. I have to imagine, as a human being that has been in water over my head before, that there was a moment of panic before the Lord's arm caught his. Even, even if it was instantaneous and the Lord was there and grabbed him, when you realize that you're in I am going to die type situation, mm -hmm. it's scary. Mm -hmm. And I think this is borne out in these scriptures about the sons of Korah. It says, it says here, it says, I was saying to, to God, Mark, why hast thou forgotten me? That momentary thing of like, where is he? His countenance was torment. Where are you at? I'm asking you, verse 8, I am asking you to help me. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Human panic. As a sword in my bones, sharp, painful, hurting. Anybody ever stabbed a bone? I, I, the, my mom was actually there. I brought gifts for the kids or something, and I, 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 was trying to get one of those ridiculous zip ties that they put on those things. And I, I remember stabbing into my hand with my knife. And I remember it thumping against my bone. It was the sharpest pain I have ever felt. And I didn't realize bones could feel the way that they do. But they do. They feel, they, 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 they feel just as sharply as your skin does. In fact, I think going through my skin was the easy part of that situation. Right. And it did that thing where you can like open it up and see the white for a second and then close it back because there just wasn't any blood. The body hadn't realized, oh, we're cut and we need blood now to start gushing out. Uh, and it, it, it was the same thing. That sharpness in the bones, it, it cuts. Because why? It says, my enemies approach me while they say unto me, where is thy God? Right. Let's think about the spectators on the boat in the story of Peter. There were 11 other disciples in that boat, and they probably saw Peter walk, 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 and down he goes. Mm -hmm. And they probably went, that wasn't Jesus. Because remember, they still thought it was a spirit. Why did Peter ask him to go out on the water? If it is you, this is paraphrasing, if it is you, let me walk on the water to you. Mm -hmm. How many people in the boat probably thought, that wasn't Jesus. It is a spirit. That was, and now we just lost Peter. He's over the side. Where is thy God? And I, the scripture seems to indicate that Jesus was almost immediately there on Peter. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, save me. And then he grabbed him. But that momentary human panic, it, it took, what, fractions of a second for, for Peter to start going under? Right. It took, you know, it, it, probably a handful of heartbeats. At least the length of time it would take to say, Lord, save me. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, maybe a second. Right. But that momentary human, and we're all capable of it. When, and, and when you're depressed, you're more capable of it. Amen. Am I really saved? Is this all in vain? Momentary human panic brought on by spiritual depression. That why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Amen. Hope thou. We have that very same phraseology used again. Where is your faith? And colon. For I shall yet praise Him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now the 
reason for faith or the elaboration of faith granted to us by the colon here in this verse is different from verse 5. Let's examine them side by side. Verse 5 says, for I shall praise him for the help of his countenance. And verse 11 says, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. It is a, a continuation of verse 5. It says, I'm, I, shall, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. I feel him. It says, verse 5 it says, I'm, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Verse, verse 5 says, I can feel your help. Verse 11 is, your, it, 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 I have your help. Amen. I, I, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can feel your presence there. It's the difference of seeing Jesus on the water and feeling His arm grab yours. Amen. Now, eventually, everything would go back to normal in Israel. David would become victor. Absalom would get hanged by his own hair and then stabbed to death by Joab. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, everything would go back to normal. But I think there is a really good lesson to learn from the from the an awful time for these men, for the for, for, for these priests, and and what we can take away from it. I know we're not able to take questions, but uh, that is all we have today. Uh, we have about ten minutes, and we'll get back started with the rest of the services. Amen. You are dismissed.